<laughs> Why am I so nervous this morning? <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. Today I wanted to show you four super easy care philodendron that I think y'all need to know about. And if you don't already have these in your care, I think you might need to start looking for them because they're amazing. So let's just dive on in. Like I said, I only have four plants to show you guys today. I wanted to keep it super short and sweet. So what do I want to start with? Let me start with this big guy over here so I can get him out of the way. This ah, is my beautiful Philodendron Splendid. It's gonna be really hard for me to get this guy like fully in the frame for you. But there you are, you can kind of see him here. So yeah, this is the Philodendron Splendid. I was so kindly sent this by Aeroid Market um, and I actually just placed another order with them. I'm so excited. Well, place actually technically placing my first order with them because they sent me the first ever order that I'd ever gotten, um, which was super, super kind. And so yeah, I placed my first like actual order um, with them. So I'm super excited to show you guys what I got when those get in. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is the Philodendron Splendid. It is a cross between the Philodendron Melanochrysum and Philodendron Varicosum. Yes, it's a cross between the Melanochrysum and the Varicosum. It is the Splendid. So yes, I am just absolutely in love with this plant. As you can see, she's just one long vine right now. Um, I am actually working on air layering her at the moment with these little cups. So that's what you're seeing um, on the back side. But yeah, I just can knock it over the beauty of this plant. And look at how pretty the backs of the leaves are too. Like what the heck? Ah, oh, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous plant. And I think because it's a hybrid, it's super, super easy to care for. Now I will say I have had just an overall pest problem um, in my house over the last couple of months here that I've been trying to get under control. This bad boy still has thrips. Most of my plants have thrips right now. So, <laughs> Yeah, cross your fingers for me that I can beat the thrips. I know I will, I just need to be really consistent. So I actually need to do another full spray down today. So I think I'll actually shoot a video showing you guys everything that I'm using because I have added, and I think one or two extra goodies since the last like pest spray down video that I did for you guys. So I'll show y'all what I'm using to hopefully kill all these little buggies, but um, you're not gonna be able to see them on here. They're really, really small little black bugs. But, um, but yeah, other than the pest, this plant has done so, so well. And now can I get you angled down so you can see the very top leaf? All right, so there's the very top leaf. You can kind of see it came out a little funky. I do believe that is because of the thrip damage. Um, so I'm not terribly worried about it. Like I said, I am air layering this bad boy. Also going to be in another video for you guys. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned. But yeah, I will be chopping this guy up eventually and making a bushy pot because how pretty would that look? I think that would just look so, so nice. And it still has um, some of like the first leaves that it came to me with. So I'm pretty sure these two here are definitely the ones they came with. And I actually think this guy might have come with it and this guy also. Yeah, I don't fully remember, but it came with a lot of leaves when they sent it to me, which was, oh, which was crazy. So yeah, I'm really excited to continue to watch this plant grow. Like I said, despite having a pest issue right now, it's still, let me set this guy down. You can kind of see him, yeah. Um, but yeah, like I said, despite having a pest problem, this guy has still been pushing out leaves pretty consistently, like, yeah, it's really impressive. I will say, if you are planning on getting a plant like this or you have this plant and you wanna grow it just straight up like this and like, oh my gosh, I have such an itchy eye. Oh, yeah, but straight up like this, um, get yourself a really large plank and then you're gonna wanna have like a really nice heavy pot to put your nursery pot in or to just plant it straight into a really heavy pot. That way your large stake or moss pole or whatever you're using um, doesn't get too heavy and topple the whole thing over because this guy wants to grow quickly. It wants to grow up and you can see like the leaves were starting to get pretty big and then I, 
was in my, you know, plant lull or just whole body lull <laughs> where I wasn't really taking care of like myself or my plants and I didn't get him on a new larger plank soon enough. So I think that's also kind of why, let me dip him down a little bit. I think that's also kind of why this like upper leaf got a little bit smaller. Where is he? There you go. Yeah, he's a little smaller than this one here and definitely smaller than this one. But, um, like I said, I'm not even too worried about it because I am going to chop and prop it. So I'm just so excited to see what this guy does and hopefully see some good aerial roots shooting out soon. Yeah, we'll see. We'll cross our fingers for that. But yeah, absolutely stunning plant. Not scared of pests, not scared of anything. She will just keep growing for you. Like, okay. That's my kind of plant, philodendron splendid. Now listen, don't fall over, okay? We got a deal? Cool. All right, so <laughs> the next plant that I wanna show you, I'm very, very excited to show you, this one here. So ah, this is a philodendron pastazanum. Look at how pretty. So this is a plant that I ordered from Equigenera and I picked it up when I went to their pop-up show in Denver. So it came with these three leaves. Now I have this in this video as an easy care plant. Now I realize that I have not had this plant for long, but the reason I have it on here as easy care is because this is the leaf, yeah, this leaf I was initially showing you. This is the leaf that has shown the most like acclimation damage and that is just a little bit of a yellowing around the like outer rim of the leaf. Nothing really else is going on with these other two leaves. They look pretty darn perfect still. Is that? No, we're good. And I just love how the lobes are kind of like overlapping here. Oh, so pretty, but look, she is popping out a new leaf already. Like that, it's been pretty quick. It's been like a month, less than a month than has it been less than a month? Yes, it's been less than a month since I picked this plant up and it's already popping out a new leaf. Now, it is not the first one to pop out a new leaf, but I believe it is the first of the philodendron to push out a leaf. So I'm very, very happy to report that this guy looks like he is acclimating beautifully. I feel like this leaf already looks like it's gonna be a good size. I'm trying not to judge too early, but oh, and you guys, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to show you this. If I can't get it here, I will get you some B-roll footage, but there are some beautiful, there's no, I'm gonna be able to show it to you. So I'll get some pretty B-roll for you, but I'll describe it. They're beautiful red fuzzy roots and they are just shooting down into the soil from this new node that grew. So, ah, this guy is clearly really, really happy. I don't do anything special for this guy. I treat it the same way that I treat honestly, pretty much all of my plants, but especially all of my philodendron where I let them get pretty much all the way dry. I wait until the, um, what's it called? I wait until the pot is super, super light when I pick it up and then I know to go ahead and give it some water and a little bit of food along with the watering. And that has proven to make these plants really, really happy. So I, I can't be happier. I couldn't be happier. There we go. I don't even have words. I also haven't had my coffee yet this morning and it's like, 8.30, I, who am I? I don't even know. But um, but yeah, I am just so pleased with this plant. I can't wait to see the leaves get more and more mature because I don't know, I feel like Pastazanum is one of those plants that is also kind of underrated despite it being, you know, a little bit more of the like rare or uncommon side of philodendron. It's still kind of underrated if you ask me. I don't feel like I see that many people talking about it. And you know, maybe it's because the leaves are a little bit more plain Jane, but I mean, look at that. You just can't, you can't deny that that's a beautiful, beautiful leaf. You know, I mean, ugh. and the back of it, it's also not like crazy on the back, but just the venation that you can see, it's so lovely. And again, I love that the lobes are a little bit overlapping. Ah just so pretty. So yeah, I can't wait to show you guys updates as soon as this leaf pops out of here. I think once this leaf fully pops out and a couple others that are brewing right now, I'm gonna do a full kind of walkthrough of my collection and show you all of the new growth updates because there have been quite a, free, quite a few. So I'm really excited to show you those. So again, stay tuned for that because 
I'm really excited. I, uh, it just makes you feel so good when new growth is coming out. You know what I mean? So yeah. Okay. Anywho, philodendron pastazanum, absolutely stunning and really, really easy care. Um, one thing I also wanted to mention too with this plant is it does not seem to like droop. You would think that maybe with having such long petioles that he would be prone to like drooping over and looking kind of sad um, when he's thirsty, but so far he has not done that at all. He's just like been perky and chilling. If anything, the leaves will just start to feel a little bit more thin um, when it's getting more thirsty. So that's the only thing I've really noticed as far as like a tell, but he just stays looking beautiful. Am I showing you two plants from Erin Market today? I think I am. I am. Y'all, I love Aeroid Market. Like, if you've ever messaged them or talked to anyone on their team, you know they're super, super sweet and super kind. So, I don't even feel bad about having two plants from Aeroid Market on my list today. So, my third philodendron that is under my really easy care uh, category, at least for me, is going to be the philodendron billetier. I just repotted this beast yesterday or the day before or something like that because, where is it? This is the newest leaf right here. Let me show it to you. This guy here is the newest leaf, but which is a really good size, but it, I feel like it was a little bit smaller than this one that's in front of you here, and then also definitely smaller than this one right here. So, and, Besides it getting a little bit smaller coming out, it usually pushes out leaf after leaf after leaf. Like as soon as it's done pushing one out and it unfurls, this is like already ready to go and push out another leaf. This little guy was just curled and sad. It reminded me, oops, it reminded me of like a really sad, um, I don't know, orca dorsal fin you know what i mean just like real sad like you've been in a tank and you should be out in the wild that's what this little guy looked like and he is slowly but surely straightening himself out and it looks like it's all like shiny at the very tip so i feel like that means that that's like a little bit of new growth happening so we've got some movement happening already i think he just wanted some more room for the roots they honestly weren't even like that crazy, crazy root bound, but a bunch of the roots were like coming out from the top of the soil or from the top of the pot. And there's like, I don't know if you'll be able to see, I'll get some funny shots so you can see these weird little aerial roots that are still sticking out of the top of the soil because that's just what they want to do. But ah, yeah, this plant, you guys, you guys, First off, another humongous giant thank you to Air Raid Market. Also, I don't think I mentioned, but thank you to Equigenera for the Pastazanum. I mean, I paid for the Pastazanum. I did not pay for the other two from Air Raid Market, but still, thank you to Equigenera for producing such amazing plants. Oh my God. But yeah, massive thank you to Aeroid Market. I'm so all over the place, you guys. I need my coffee, but I just can't get over it. This was a plant that was on my wish list for so, so long. Like it was number one on my wish list for a very, very long time. And it's here and it holds up to all of the hype. Like it's so lovely. Do you hear how like nice and thick? Doesn't that sound nice and thick? Am I crazy? I don't know. I just think it's absolutely stunning. I love the carrot orange petioles. It's just such a cool plant. And like I said, he just pops out leaf after leaf after leaf. Like, I don't know, like nobody's business. It's crazy. It's so fun to watch. It's so satisfying, especially when the leaves are just getting like bigger and bigger. Like, let me show you the tiniest leaf that it has. This is our tiniest baby leaf, right? And then here's like one of our biggest leaves. Do you see what I'm talking about with the leaf jump? It's so quick, it's so fun to watch, and 
it's just worth it. And I feel like these plants are coming down in price quite a bit. So if you've been looking for a philodendron billetier, you've been wanting one for a while, I would definitely start keeping your eyes peeled at a bunch of different shops. Um, keep your eyes on sales and stuff like that. I always like to set up notifications for if a sale is coming up, you know what I mean? So that way I'm not missing it um, because I've been seeing really good sized plants of the non-variegated philodendron billetier for a really, really good price. Like I feel like around 30 to $40 sometimes for like a pretty good sized plant. And like I said, it grows quick. So don't be shy about getting a billetier at a smaller size because she's gonna grow for you no problem. So yes, beautiful philodendron billetier. Absolutely gorgeous. A little bit on the higher price side. So my last plant to show you today is one that I feel personally is like pretty similar aesthetically to the Billetier, but it's definitely much cheaper, like way, way, way cheaper. So I'm gonna grab my smallest one. I, oh, oh no. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Oh. My string of hearts or whatever is getting all tangled here. But this is the Philodendron Burl Marks. She's so cute, she's so wild. As you can see at the base here, she grows just like crazy. She just keeps branching off and going wherever she can go. This plant is so, so easy to care for, you guys. I wanna say, I think out of all of the plants, this is the easiest to care for. And it is also, out of all the four that I've shown you today, it's also the best price plant that you can find. I've been finding these guys, I keep thinking I see it best, but I don't, we're good. I keep finding these guys um, at a really good size, like this size or bigger for like $30, which I feel like is a pretty good price because I don't know, I originally bought um, a little, unrooted cutting or maybe it had just like a couple of aerial roots or something that it was cut with um it had like two or three leaves on it and i bought it from etsy it was my first like rare plant that i purchased and ordered and i was so excited and it's just grown like crazy and okay let me tell you how much i bought that for because that was the point i want to say i bought the like three or four leaf cutting for around 20 or 25 dollars and the fact that you can now find something like this size or even bigger for around the same that's insane to me. Like that is just so cool. I love to see plant prices coming down. That's like a really small example too. Like some plant prices have just come down so crazy and I like to see it. I really like to see it. But this one specifically is an amazing price plant. It grows just like nobody's business. The cutting that I initially had, it was just growing straight up and then kept like branching off into all these things. But it was just held like straight up by like, you know, a little, a little chunk, you know what I mean? It was just like one piece of stem that was fairly small and that was holding up what turned into this like giant tree. And I forgot to water it for a couple of days and she toppled over and snapped right at the base. And I was like, okay, well, that's a sign, time to take a bunch of cuttings. Um, I think I gave some to like a coworker or something and um, propagated the rest and put them all back into a giant pot, which I've had that giant pot over in the corner there. It's very, very large. And then I also started this little guy as well. I honestly don't even know why I started this. I don't regret it though, it's super cute. And hopefully you can see there's like tons of new growth like all up in there. It's so cool. Ah! So this is a plant that if you want something that's really gonna make your space feel kind of jungly and bright and have a plant that you're just not really gonna have to worry about but will be so rewarding because you'll just like turn around one day and then it'll be like way bigger and you're just like, whoa, where did you come from? This is that plant for you. This is that plant that will just be so rewarding for such little work. 
easy and very forgiving if for underwatering or anything like that. I would honestly say that for any of the plants that I have shown you today. Um, so far in my care, they have all been very forgiving if you underwater them. Um, and honestly, if you overwater them as well, they've been pretty forgiving. The only one I would be most concerned about with something like that is probably the Splendid, just because it's more of that velvety leaf philodendron, whereas these other guys are that more kind of like sturdy, rubbery-ish feeling leaf. So yeah, they've all been very, very forgiving, whether you underwater or overwater, although I would suggest go on the underwatering side if you can, although I know, especially as new plant parents, we wanna just like, we wanna love our plants so hard, and I totally get that. But um, but yeah, don't feel bad about forgetting about your plants sometimes because they like it. I forgot about this for quite a while, and she just has been popping off like crazy. And again, I made this pot by just sticking like four to six cuttings in there, like single leaf cuttings, just chucking them in here, and this is what it's turned into after a few months. So yeah, absolutely beautiful philodendron. Burl Marks, um, and as I said, it's obviously, how do I show this to you? It's obviously still quite different from the, here we go, yeah, from the Billy TA, it's quite different still, but can you can kind of see what I mean by like, kind of similar leaf shape happening, um, definitely a different kind of growth pattern, definitely different colored petioles, but, oh, to me, it kind of gives a little bit of that same feel, little jungly philodendron vibe happening. So I absolutely love both of those plants, all of these plants actually, that's why I'm showing them to you. But these were four really easy care philodendron that I feel like anyone could grow, whether you feel like you have a green thumb or not. So give them a try if you haven't already. And even if you have tried them before and you didn't succeed that first time, try, try again. You know what I mean? Practice makes perfect and plants want to live. So just try it again. I'm sure you'll do absolutely fantastic. And there's so many people on the internet, myself included, that would love to help you with any of your planty problems. So definitely don't be shy about reaching out if you have a question or need some help. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining me for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.